Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Steven Su from Itri's uh, research, policy research organization called IEK. And in the following uh, 15 minutes, I will go very quickly on some of the uh, material that uh, we have learned from technology uh, uh, practice and uh, share with you some of the challenges that we, we see and we are continuously uh, improving so that we could uh, share more together as a group. So um, very quickly that uh, my organization, the parent organization, ETRI ITRI, uh, is the largest research institute uh, in Taiwan, roughly around 6,000 people with mostly R&D development uh, technologists. However, my organization uh, has about 200 people uh, focusing on uh, industry policies as well as technology trends. We do not do any uh, R&D development. In the past, uh, each as a whole works closer uh, with the industries under the supervision of Ministry of uh, Economic Affairs. Uh, but uh, in recent years, we also are under mandate uh, to work closer with the universities. Uh, having said that, that uh, in Taiwan, uh, previously universities have more uh, KPIs have to do with papers and patents, and but that is also a change. Uh, but with uh, each of being in the middle of university and also uh, industries, we 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 uh, begin to look for more ways to have trilateral type of collaboration. So in today's uh, uh, material that I will share with you some of the technology force that uh, we work uh, with Ministry of Economic Affairs from the industry side. Uh, at the end, I will share with you some of the ongoing effort that we are doing with the uh, Ministry of Science and Technology to work with the universities. So as um, uh, earlier that you have seen the presentation of the S-curve, in the past uh, 43 years or so that ETRI has been at the forefront of working and, uh, with Taiwan industry, particularly in creating new industry. So you could see from the early days of TSMC, the foundry, uh, now we begin to uh, move closer to the uh, software hardware integration. As you could see on this chart, most of the industry we created are having to do with the hardware. However, in the uh, new era of internet economy, that for example, that we are working on our own uh, OS uh, to team up with our uh, service in the cloud. So more and more that we wish uh, to be uh, more uh, integration of different types of technologies. Uh, my organization, IEK, uh, has a vision by 2020 that we will be the uh, world-class uh, think tank uh, with a mission to help uh, Taiwan industries. But the new key word here is value creation. Later I will discuss more on this aspect. However, having said that we are working uh, uh, to help the Taiwan industry, now we do recognize that uh, in the global world there are many things that we could partner together and therefore um, benefiting all the industry in the world and that is a key summary of uh, my organization's vision for 2020. I'll skip all this. Uh, then next I will share with you some of the uh, science and technology force that uh, we have learned from uh, uh, working with Ministry of Economic Affairs. Since 2006, that we have undertaken a, a, a very uh, long established project. That uh, every three years we will push our vision um, five years um, beyond. So uh, uh, in 2006, that uh, we were looking at 2015, and now we are looking at 2030. And with uh, uh, the, the youth uh, being a big part, a very bottom, uh, the laser, maybe okay here. With the youth uh, movement being part of the uh, formulation of our vision, but as I have mentioned, that one of the challenges that we face with this type of uh, long-term vision is having to work with the government, such that we would have stability uh, in terms of this uh, government policy as well. But as you know, that every time that we have new election, the challenge is that how can we? Uh, uh, put together a vision uh, with the sustainability, continuity, as well as uh, long-term vision and stress. Uh, I think that many of our think tanks would uh, uh, face this type of challenge uh, continuously. 
So, so in this vision, uh, this is a, a very standard process that we look at the uh, global trends, uh, we look at what's key for Taiwan, I will not go into the details. The challenge that we see in Taiwan is that, I remember uh, one time I went to the uh, UK Foresight team uh, for their long-term vision program, they are mandated to talk to uh, uh, roughly one to two hundred uh, experts outside of the UK. Uh, again, our challenge in Taiwan is that in the past, uh, we uh, have been talking to uh, many experts in Taiwan, getting the global trends from outside the world. Uh, as um, uh, uh, Dr. Atkinson has mentioned uh, uh, this morning, that uh, it's not enough for one industry or a few industries to be innovative. We have to uh, uh, get the whole nation's industry to be innovative. And therefore, that uh, there are many areas that are not our expertise, and therefore, uh, we constantly uh, we we'll look for ways to improve in the future in our process uh, to be uh, talking to uh, global experts like you on a first-hand basis. And one of the things that we put together for our uh, technology foresight research is that looking at the whole thing like a, a tree, so all this global scan is basically the root or the fertilization of our tree. At the end of the tree is the uh, uh, fruit for our industrialization of uh, uh, technology foresight. And one of the key elements that we begin to emphasize more, as I have mentioned in our IEK 2020 vision, is this value creation. So previously, we look at industry as the end of the, 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 the fruit, uh, but we begin to emphasize more our ecosystem, value creation, and also uh, continuation of uh, a different type of uh, scenario. So we use this type, this type of um, uh, uh, vision or uh, the mechanism to try to plant more uh, big trees uh, in our uh, outcome for our technology foresight. Uh, skip this. So the, uh, for the scenario planning, many uh, busy words, but I will not go into the details. Uh, we also do scenario development by target years. One of the uh, lessons learned we, uh, from this process is that uh, we have not done uh, uh, enough scenarios uh, for different types of uh, uh, technology forefront. Uh, uh, one example is that up until uh, end of last year, uh, we have not envisioned that the new government would put a, a new uh, nuclear free uh, vision by 2025. And therefore, in all our planning for green technologies, uh, as well as some of the related technology, that uh, we do not have that type of uh, scenario in mind. And therefore, that in the last year or so, we are uh, very busy in trying to uh, uh, come up with more comprehensive plans. So our learning from this type of exercise is that as a think tank, uh, doing this type of uh, long-term science and technology, uh, foresight, uh, it's uh, uh, not easy. Huh? It's not easy to forecast certain scenarios with um, accuracy. However, uh, it's our think tank's responsibilities to have as many relevant scenarios as possible and have different types of um, uh, uh, strategies um, for different uh, timings when the new government decides to uh, take on certain initiatives also directions. In terms of the technology portfolio, we spend quite a bit uh, of um, time in collaborating uh, with the Stanford SRI uh, uh, from the past. So uh, without going into the details, uh, we put the uh, uh, different types of um, uh, target technology for the future, uh, one by the uh, uh, risk, mainly uh, how competitive Taiwan is on the x-axis, then uh, on the y-axis is the uh, major impact. We did this type of exercise every uh, three to four years, so on the example that you see on this chart is a 17 sort of like a, a, a technology that would be relevant for commercialization. Uh, by the year 2025. We did that exercise uh, uh, in 2014 and updated uh, uh, since then. But you can see that uh, very small levels, but uh, you can see that there are different types of um, 
uh, technology, but more on the uh, uh, commercial side uh, versus uh, like basic research. But uh, one uh, learning I I have um, uh, taken from this is that uh, up until three years ago, when people talk about these uh, smart street lighting systems, that in Taiwan, whenever that we gather this type of outcome and, and discuss with the people, people will think that oh, this is a uh, uh, very low tech, and this is not forefront enough. But uh, in the last two, three years or so, that we have uh, incorporated this into our, for example, LED systems, into our smart city systems, and into our communication network. We are beginning to do some uh, pilot in our uh, smart cities program. So uh, again, uh, this is one of the uh, uh, a way to make things transparent so that people uh, can use it for uh, different types of discussion. So with this type of uh, technology plan, planning portfolio, portfolio planning, technology portfolio planning, TPP, that we uh, use this uh, to work with our Department of Industrial Technology uh, to solicit proposals and also uh, uh, work with a, a research institute like uh, ITRI. In Taiwan, we have um, uh, roughly around 20 plus research institutes like ITRI. So it's very important for the funding agencies to uh, communicate uh, uh, with uh, these research institutes in terms of new proposals and also the impact that the, uh, these proposals will try to bring. So next I'll talk about some of the uh, 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 recent events. Uh, starting in 2014, uh, as I mentioned now, we have roughly uh, 20 plus research institutes. So for the last 20 or 30 years or so, it became that the research institute, they work on certain budget and they will do some uh, proposals. And it's very hard for the funding agency like uh, MOES, DOIT, to uh, decide uh, if the targets for these research programs are set appropriately. So in the last two years that we have uh, uh, done a four-step process, in the first three steps, uh, in terms of the uh, program defining, uh, a research uh, uh, arm like uh, IEK, who does not do any R&D development, will play a heavy role in the uh, first three stages, working with the funding agencies. Then after that, we have defined what will be the uh, appropriate challenges and also uh, commercialization impact. Then we we'll, would we'll call for proposal among different research institutes. And so that is a change from a more bottom-up approach to a top-down approach. But again, uh, we are talking about a increasing uh, proportion of the funding um, budget, not overall. Uh, overall speaking, in Taiwan, we are still more bottom-up uh, approach. So with that type of uh, COFA proposal, then we will separate different technology by uh, commercialization years. So we will have uh, uh, 7 to 10 years, sort of like long-term range planning. Uh, as short as uh, one to two years or three to six years, different types of uh, uh, programs. Uh, back to the, the tree I was talking about. So uh, in the last few years, that uh, Industry 4.0 is a big topic. So Taiwan has been discussing this topic by using this type of approach. We look at what would be the industry, remember the, the, the trend tree I mentioned before, that will try to form the ecosystem but we have to look at what would be the value added for such a program to uh, uh, deliver at the end and coupling with different types of uh, uh, future lifestyle uh, scenario. So it's going through this type of process that we begin to incorporate uh, initiatives related to Industry 4.0 and with, within the last two years, a lot of discussion and uh, this year with a new, pro, new government uh, in place that we formally uh, uh, push this program ahead uh, as a small machinery uh, for the future. So lastly, let me talk about some of the uh, uh, future perspectives uh, from this type of uh, uh, technology foresight. Uh, few challenges we met ahead for Taiwan. One is that, as I mentioned, there are still ways that we need to improve our mechanism. Uh, so 
uh, how to foster more innovative application in the industry and also having a link to the university as I will uh, mention a bit later. Some of the key challenges for Taiwan by 2025 still require very key strategy. As I mentioned, that we have a new uh, nuclear-free uh, uh, vision. So how can we do that? And also cross-functional mechanism. Uh, I mentioned that we work for Ministry of Economic Affairs and we work for Ministry of Science and Technology. Between two ministries, there are different types of agenda. How can we uh, do better cross-functional, cross-domain, cross-discipline? Uh, in the last year or so, that under a lot of preparation, we have uh, helped Ministry of Science and Technology launch uh, their own uh, SNT foresight project. Very different from uh, uh, other projects before that, we put a major focus on uh, future society's needs and challenges um, with Taiwan as part of the uh, main focus. In the previous year, we would think about business application that has a worldwide market. But the recent couple of years, as I mentioned, that we have a big youth movement. Uh, we have uh, uh, challenges in terms of our wage being low, our uh, uh, employment rate uh, not being at a very satisfactory level. And therefore, uh, we, we believe that uh, in the next few years, all our uh, technology proposal or the foresight program will put a major focus on needs and challenges start from Taiwan first. And we believe that anything that we could do to help Taiwan resolve our own programs will have worldwide market potential because Taiwan is not alone in terms of the climate issues, in terms of the issues. And, and so that, without going into the detail, that is a very key change in our uh, uh, foresight program for the Ministry of Science uh, uh, and technology. So as you could see that in this uh, uh, SNT foresight project, the topics for societal challenges is a very heart of this uh, two-stage process. One on the global trends and the second one uh, in terms of the uh, uh, our own priorities. And also that uh, we learned from working with Stanford Silicon Valley in the last uh, few years uh, with an open platform since 2004. Now we took a page from the Stanford Design School and also the Google X previously, the, the, the uh, uh, organization, uh, to come up with these three circles as the uh, uh, heart of our uh, foresight program. One is that Taiwan has been very good in doing technology uh, for breakthrough and with a little bit of uh, Taiwan made in Taiwan brand, we are learning how to do business with our own brand, not just OEM, ODM. But uh, learning from the Western world that how to create value from the user spec perspective uh, is more beyond uh, having some brand under Taiwan's name. So this is the part that we are uh, learning very much. And also in the last couple of years, we have participated in Google X uh, moonshot program by proposing some uh, innovations that will be able to solve the worldwide problem, not just Taiwan. So in the last two years, there are, uh, there are three proposals accepted by Google X. Uh, one uh, is that uh, each has a spin-off company um, um, uh, in trying to look at the same issue of uh, uh, carbon dioxide uh, reduction. Uh, since it's, uh, a lot of it is from the transportation sector. So we developed a new fermentation technology applied to the uh, uh, biofuel uh, production process that would have almost zero uh, carbon dioxide uh, uh, emission, and that was accepted by uh, X. Then we have two other proposals, uh, one being uh, having uh, different type of sponge coated by graphene such that it can remove spill oil from ocean easily. And a third one is that we have a university professor's team that come up with a way to uh, have mobile uh, handset uh, diagnostic of one drop of blood uh, to, uh, uh, to uh, diagnose uh, many like uh, symptoms. So, so, but that's a process that we are uh, learning as well. Uh, learning by doing, by teaming up with uh, uh, worldwide market leaders such as Google's organization so that we would focus 
on the uh, value equation, and that comes to my last slide. Uh, in the past 20 years or so, uh, Stan Xu from Taiwan's uh, Acer Group that has advocated Taiwanese to upgrade our manufacturer's value add by focusing on R&D for innovation as well as uh, creating our own brand and learning how to be uh, 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 how to know the users better. But we have seen that actually that might not be enough going forward. We have seen a lot of these uh, uh, new players coming along that is actually taking over the top of the uh, smiling curve, the, the, the big circle. So we talk about uh, Google, we talk about Apple, we talk about Uber. Uh, the new economy actually that we need to be user-centric in terms of uh, for the ecosystem. It's not about hardware, it's not about software. So uh, having said that, Taiwan still has a very good hardware as a supply chain. We want to be more systematic, uh, 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 software driven, and we want to be uh, tied up to the user creation. So at the end of the day, that we, we think that um, for Smart Cities program, that is one of the Taiwan's uh, uh, own field, own application. So in the past, uh, each city of Taiwan is doing its own Smart Cities. We are under major discussion right now, try to have different cities uh, applying uh, different type of pilot programs so, so that we will have more scale and momentum. And that is going to be the market pool for our future science and technology foresight. Uh, so that's the end of uh, my sharing. Thank you.